Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of the day here on the Smart Stage. Joining me is Matt, the Founder and Innovation Director at Smile. Matt, welcome to the session. Hey Adam, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you mate. Um, third and final day, still <laughs> buzzed and still excited for the rest of the day. You are here to actually deliver a session on Samsung Life Unstoppable and really interesting into that. Who said virtual can't be as good as real life? So I'm going to hand over to you now. The floor is yours. Really looking forward to watching this session. Amazing. Thank you so much, Adam. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, uh, I'm Matt, and I'd like to talk to you, as Adam just mentioned, about a project. Uh, if you wind your minds back to uh, last September, that seems like ages ago, doesn't it? Um, and a project we called Life, Samsung Life Unstoppable. Uh, and we named this Who Said Virtual Can't Be As Good As In Real Life. So, um, a, a little bit of just background. So, Smile, as you may or may not know, is a creative agency that specializes in live and digital brand experiences. And like many of you out there, we've had a interesting slash challenging year, um, really, uh, in terms of reinventing, look at the markets, look at what our clients have needed and how their requirements have changed. And just before I, I, I get into it, I'd just like to take my hat off and say how amazing uh, I, th I feel that the whole industry has been in terms of coming together, it's innovation, it's ideation. Um, and how they've managed to overcome these monumental challenges that we've never seen before. So uh, truly inspirational what the industry has managed to do. Um, however, we were very fortunate. We uh, uh, recently just been awarded uh, Agency of the Year four times from four major, in from four major industry bodies, uh, which is a real highlight, but it's been a testament to the work our whole team has put in. I know that's, that's ubiqu ubiquitous amongst the uh, the whole industry everyone's worked so hard to do so many amazing things um, but I'm going to just talk to you today just about uh, life unstoppable um, and life unstoppable uh, basically if you again wind your minds all the way back uh, to like May 2020 when that shock wave of COVID was reverberating around everywhere uh, and brands were still brands were feeling this they uh, some had put pause communications entirely while others relied on webinars to reach that new lockdown audience uh, and unsure on really how to evolve that virtual approach. In this uncertainty, Samsung challenged us to pivot its traditional EFA presence, which was a large expo and uh, conference uh, set up uh, in Berlin in Germany. Uh, and uh, they wanted us to provide a much needed antidote to this Kind of virtual sea of sameness in this broadcast and this, these streams that were going on. Um, but at, at the time, everyone was looking for this digital silver bullet, this magic solution. Um, and I don't, and as we probably all know now, I, that didn't really exist in one entity. Where we focused a lot of our energy and time was really on that human engagement uh, and how can we really bring that experience to life uh, despite not being able to be there face-to-face -face, uh, and in person. Samsung also set us some really big KPIs. So uh, they wanted us to achieve a 57 uh, NPS score, drive attendance by 133% year on year from the virtual, reduce spend by 58%, um, and increase sentiment by 5%. Um, all tough targets, and I will uh, go in in a second and, uh, and explain how we managed to achieve this. Um, but we live in the uh, most broadcast generation in history with TV, social, Zoom, webinars, all competing for our time. Now, COVID just heightened this with so many more, so much more competition for our time at the time. And we needed to cut through that when we were thinking about how we invite guests to that and how could we pique interest, uh, interest with impactful comms campaigns. So uh, our campaign built anticipation for a must-tend event from that very first touch point. And I know you've hear, heard it again and again, but we uh, we had to ensure partners and press realize this was no ordinary virtual event and stand out in that uh, in the sea of webinars there. So we developed a highly visual, high media rich campaign targeted at key content 
uh, contacts and designed to tease the innovative gaming elements of the experience. As part of this campaign, uh, certain guests received in real life boxes to their door, uh, including new Samsung products that were also embedded in the Life Unstoppable experience. For example, uh, we gave Samsung Buds, uh, which enabled these participants to experience the opening slam poetry section in immersive 8D audio, uh, how we recorded it. And actually, just talking about uh, the uh, 8D audio, um, so um, how did we want to open the activation? Um, what was the tone we wanted to strike with that audience? So we knew it needed to be sincere and authentic and true, true to Samsung's belief and values, uh, and, and true to what the consumer was actually going through at the time and what they were experiencing, those challenges. So through a lot of consumer research, we, we looked at them and looked at uh, how they're overcoming those cards, those blockers in life, uh, and how uh, we found that actually they were using tech in more innovative and creative ways to communicate to go to school, to show up, to have, go on virtual dates. And this inspired us. Uh, and we wanted to celebrate how the consumer had overcome those can'ts. And therefore, that's why we named the, the activation Life Unstoppable. From here, we uh, commissioned influencer and slam poet Max Wallace to produce a spoken word intro that echoed these, uh, these sentiments. Um, but in true uh, Samsung style, and this is where they're the, uh, the earphones came in. Uh, we recorded it all in 8D audio with a soundscape around it to show how technology really uplifts and underpins uh, experiences and how it can enhance that experience. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna show you a little bit of that intro. Now, unfortunately, uh, on this stream, it won't come through in 8D audio, but hopefully from there, you'll get the idea. There was a lot in life of stagnation. Masked up, rinse groceries, frustration. Now we're overcoming those can'ts with yes we can. Life with new innovations, notations, standing ovations. Seeing artwork on walls that changes to our friends. Conversations. Developing a new frame of mind with multiple solutions. We see the sky clear of pollution. Friends reconnected playing games. Holding the globe in their living room. Mums discover lost passions and aspirations. School kids collaborate on important decisions through a technological revolution. Classrooms coming home. People watch brand new TV obsessions, trying their delivered home collections of new recipes rather than eating out. We're hoping that the culmination of this societal reflection is a technological resurrection. Grandma learning to use a tablet and pen for the first time. And never too late, education, a future hope for a joint resolution. What happens next, we decide on it together. Like best mates on a virtual date. Stop. Close your eyes. Let's know that whatever formulation it takes, we do what we can't. We will live a life unstoppable. So that gives you the kind of the sentiment and the feeling we wanted to go in with and actually that, that uh, really moving piece from Max uh, kind of uh, set this up but where we wanted to go next was somewhere slightly different so we wanted to immerse the audience in a different world. We wanted to give them something they hadn't seen before, uh, enable them to be the first person uh, and to move around. So we turned to the gaming uh, community and I'm sure all of you will have heard about this tons and tons over the past few days from amazing speakers. Uh, but we turned to Unreal Engine. Uh, that gave an uh, Unreal Engine, as you guys all know, uh, Fortnite, Final Fantasy, Tekken, all created on this platform. It gave our team the ability to really immerse the viewer, the participant, in the experience, uh, creating a whole Samsung home from the ground up in that photo real environment. Uh, offering them in that immersive, interactive platform. Um, this obviously appealed to Gen, Gen Z uh, audience, but also appealed to the tech press uh, that were there at the time as well. Um, we, we had a few challenges though with this, because it hadn't been used in this way, and we were looking at 5,000 people plus. So how do we create that? Because actually this, this platform 
needs a really high powered machine to run it on. So we use pixel streaming. But we had 5,000 concurrent pixel streaming, uh, instances on pixel streaming running at the same time. Uh, and that was a first. Now, pixel, pixel streaming, I'm, I'm sure most of you again know this but uh, now, but the uh, pixel streaming is where actually you have a really high powered machine in the cloud uh, and you're, you can run everything uh, from that. So you stream the video down and your keyboard commands or mouse uh, or touch screen streams back up to the, uh, the instance. Um, and so that enabled us for, for viewers to actually join on an old smartphone, an old laptop, whatever, it didn't really matter because actually uh, the, all the power was in the cloud. Um, uh, so as I say, I, I think that was the first time it had actually been used uh, in that way. And then, so what does it look like? So actually in the, um, uh, in the house, uh, oh, I just uh, skipped back one slide. Uh, sorry about that. Um, in the house, we created this uh, Samsung house with the audience uh, the designed with the audience in mind and um, uh, participants were able to hear from Samsung presenters and product experts on different uh, devices uh, around the Samsung house accessing different product opportunity uh, with them uh, with opportunities for them to deep, deep dive into that product uh, at their own will um, and there was two versions of this um, you can see it on screen at the moment this is the live version um, but there was also an on-demand version. So we had the live version, um, uh, and then afterwards, after the live event had happened, uh, small groups could go in and talk to product experts one-on-one, -on -one, be shown around and have free roam around the house interacting with those products. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, the presenters on the video screen. Obviously, it, it helped fully that uh, Samsung make uh, a lot of amazing TVs, so we had them around the house. Um, when you turned your head away from this, actually we're bringing up pips uh, with them in. So you would always see a presenter, um, as you can see here. Uh, and then we had supporting graphics that would come up on screen as well, uh, to just give you some more of that detail as they were narrating, as they were talking uh, through those various products in there. Various other things came up. We could deep dive into products. We had QR codes coming up, which led to uh, augmented reality. Uh, and various other elements throughout, the surprises that happened throughout this, to just gamify this whole experience a little bit more. We also thought about accessibility here as well. Uh, this was available in five languages, uh, but we could also have keyboard, touchscreen, mouse. Uh, we had closed caption running as well at the same time. So you can see uh, an awful lot uh, catering for that wide audience. Um, so. Life on, uh, Life on Stoppable offered varied and in-depth content. In the Samsung house, participants explored that connected ecosystem of Samsung products uh, created by our team using that uh, meticulous 3D rendering. Um, and, and this enabled us also to actually not worry about presenters coming on off stage. We could have very short clips of presenters. We could move them around. We could actually make the content more relevant to the product and the storytelling that we wanted to highlight rather than being fixed in a live environment uh, on a specific presenter for uh, any length of time. This varied it up and, uh, and created interest, keeping it moving and keeping that pace going at all times. Um, and, uh, and as they moved through the space, they could interact with elements. So you see the phone, uh, the phone here, they could interact and look into it if they wanted to by touching it uh, and pulling it in. Uh, additionally, um, aesthetics were taken into account. So you can see there's styling with paws and kid robots around the place. Uh, probably the most uh, well-styled dressing room I've ever seen. But it was, it was thinking about who, who lives there and what's the demographic of that person, their persona. Uh, and so we styled the whole house fully through this. Um, other things, you'll hear about uh, a term ray tracing. If you look at this picture on the right, you can see the reflection bounce off uh, that picture as we just flew through. Again, this is only possible when you have really high power computers um, that you're looking at, that you're serving and, and uh, 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 the platform for this game. But it, may, it, may, it enabled us to have photorealistic elements in here. As we go through to this outside space, um, you can see that we had uh, Easter eggs, so these comic books you collect. There are five of them in total. These comic books were avatars of the presenter. Lots of fun creating the avatars. 
totally different story. Uh, but um, you collect five of them, and then the whole house would turn to a comic book uh, look and feel. So these little hidden extras uh, and, that, and that homage, that little nod to the gaming and comic book industry as well at the same time. Uh, and and being able to have this different house and move outside enabled us to go and then have a look at a, a completely waterproof TV in its native surrounding. So I mentioned about the design uh, and we were looking at who would live, uh, who was the persona that uh, Samsung wanted to capture and who would live in a house like this. So we twinned these together. And we actually went out to design influencers um, and we picked a number that we felt were right for that persona and, and engaged with them uh, and, how they, and looked at how they would actually dress and style the house in real life. Uh, and that included like artwork, sculptures, magazines. Um, uh, for instance, these chairs around you, they were, they're not by accident the pattern, the pattern came from one of the, one of the influencer designers, interior designers. Their haberdashery went to their haberdashery and, uh, and, and, and took their pattern and labeled it on the chair. The, um, the magazine that, that was on the table uh, was an uh, Italian Vogue magazine because it was a European uh, event. So we we're creating authenticity at every point we could. And then we brought uh, augmented reality, as I mentioned to this. Um, so we used that multi-device experience, breaking out of this screen here uh, and using secondary screens. Um, and in this example here, there was um, uh, a PUBG, a, a very well-known game, and Samsung just launched their yeah, big gaming monitor. So we actually had it so you can uh, you scan the QR code and out of, along the side of your desk, uh, a big Hercules plane would fly out the big gaming monitor and drop a parachute on your desk. So just different ways to like play around, make it playful, you know, add a little bit of fun because let's face it, at that time, uh, through COVID, we've all needed a little bit more fun in our lives. And so these were just different ways to how to bring that humour and personality uh, to life. Um, we had various external speakers as well and thought leaders that we brought into here um, that shared different perspectives and inspirations. So, and we embedded them in sessions throughout the experience, including Sten uh, Garmark from Spotify or Ben King from Dazone. Uh, Stas Skopkin from eSports, an eSports influencer, talking about the, the gaming here. Um, and uh, uh, Olympic athlete uh, Dina Asher-Smith as well. So a various a, a, a array of different people to talk about how that product relates to them uh, in this environment. And then the great thing, as you guys will already know, uh, and I'm sure there's been a lot of chats about this today, is that what the beauty of this brings is we're able to measure everything. We're able to uh, literally understand the preferences and movements, the, uh, the content they're interested in, what they clicked on, um, meaning we actually understand the audience far better. We also tailored a lot of this throughout, so uh, there wasn't a one path for everyone. They could choose their own individual path, interact with different, various different objects uh, around the whole experience. So it gave that personalization to it now. Uh, but it means that we could actually also look at the, the ROI on this and, and the, the data behind it to see what worked, what didn't work, how we can improve, um, and give us that viable, that, that vital information about the audience. Um, and uh, and that, the other thing, sorry, just uh, in here you could do was um, in like, so in this interaction, we can actually show things that aren't physical, that are, and non-tangible. So for example here, showing how the speakers, the TV and the soundbar, uh, and actually if, you looked, if we looked around now, you'd see the rest of the room uh, with the satellite speakers coming to life. But uh, bringing those things that you can't normally see to life in these environments. This was um, uh, version one, this was back in September. We are on version 2.0 or 3.0 by now actually. Uh, and there's no limits where we can go with this, this sort of technology. Uh, the gamification, the, the live in-game video we're doing at the moment, and chats, uh, having personalized avatars. Uh, we're even creating e-commerce in here at the moment, which is really exciting to take away from a, a really what is quite flat e-commerce experience generally, uh, and really bringing uh, that experience to life in that virtual world, uh, and creating 
and there's no limit. We can just create realities that are completely abstract. The only limit is our creativity. So uh, uh, such a powerful platform. And um, with this, so how did we, how, how did we do? Uh, how was this received? Uh, so it was, uh, it was really well received. It had over 5,000 people engaged with it. Um, that was a crazy increase uh, on the previous year. Um, the, uh, it was a, a, a just under 500% increase on audience. Um, the spend, they, we reduced that by 96%. Um, and target was 58%. Uh, it had a 5% uh, media sentiment uplift. Um, and a super positive feedback uh, throughout the whole activation. Um, at the, um, we had almost a 300 increase in the engagement from uh, EVA previously. Um, and then we had uh, uh, 1,300 interactions with the augmented reality. Um, and then the articles just kept on coming. Uh, almost 2,000 articles in, Europe's, uh, in Europe, 1,000 headlines uh, we captured. Um, and then this is lovely, some of the, and, and bear in mind, a lot of this was tech press. Uh, some of the social posts were amazing. So I, I just literally put out a few extracts from here, but a fully interactive experience allowing you to look around the room and more while speakers are talking. Super impressive in this pandemic age of virtual events. And, and I love the one on the right, which actually talks to that, that detail. So whoever was responsible for styling the virtual Life Unstoppable event the Samsung needs recognition, recognition for propping it with awesome furniture, including a kid robot and vinyls on cores and the coolest dressing room I've ever seen in a long time. Uh, though that, that sort of sentiment kept on coming and the, the feedback kept on coming. Um, uh, Samsung presenting us with a uh, um, view of refrigeration and virtual kitchen in which we can move around and explore our own, uh, on our own. Uh, hashtag life unstoppable. Um, and again, uh, Samsung's leadership across a breadth of consumer devices is astonishing. Awesome virtual press conference, hard to keep up with all the interactive immersive demos. And that's really what we wanted. We never wanted anyone to be able to do everything. It was just keeping that pace going. So you kept them uh, engaged uh, in that experience from start to finish. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to play you a, uh, a two minute video, which kind of summarizes all of this can't 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 enjoy live music can't play with friends can't eat out can't create can't learn people were defying the barriers they inspired us it was time for us to find new ways to do what we can't we reimagined and reinvented unthought the physical and innovated in virtual we brought unlikely teams together we burned the midnight oil. We created a world first launch event that set a new standard. We named it Life Unstoppable. We took the gaming platform Unreal Engine and repurposed it. We used pixel streaming and ray tracing to create a hyper realistic virtual apartment. The interior was designed with obsessive eyes. Once happy with every ornament and each fabric, we installed 25 of Samsung's latest products, looking like the real thing in every way. Once every pixel was perfect and our virtual venue was complete, it was ready for media and partners. Inside, their experience defied the impossible. It included scene-setting slam poetry, screen-liberating 8D audio, and multi-device AR and VR moments which blurred virtual and physical worlds. There was product immersion, storytelling, and hidden Easter eggs which looked like comic books, which, once found, unlocked hidden features. People interacted and talked to Samsung, influencers and thought leaders. They were free to explore and stay as long as they liked. Engagement levels soared 300% compared to the equivalent physical event. Who said virtual can't be as good as real life? Life unstoppable. It's what happens when can't becomes can. Um, thank you for uh, listening to us today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and it gives you a little snippet of what we did. As I say, that was 
six months ago and, or, um, and more actually. Um, but where, it, where I think the possibilities are really, really exciting. Um, thank you very much. And I'd just like to also say thank you to the Event Tech live team as well uh, for putting on an incredible show um, and putting all this together. Matt, really, really super impressive insight and thanks for sharing the story of what you guys help Samsung to achieve and, and I guess where technology really allows to take us to take these events and, and incorporate in different elements like 8D audio and stuff like that. Um, but people are already asking what's next. Um, I just want to ask you that first, in, in your opinion. You're probably at the bleeding edge. You know, Smile's a great agency, very well known, um, I, I'm sure you know, already looking like six months, 12 months ahead. Like, how do we top what you just showed us there? What, what's coming next, do you think? Um, I, I, I think actually we've only just started and that's a really exciting piece. I mean, if, if COVID has done anything, it's kind of helped us explore new boundaries and, and push them and break them. Uh, and, and actually what we're already working on, as I um, mentioned, like 3.0, we're doing an e-commerce piece for a brand home where actually you go around, you're in so much more interaction, but being able to talk to people in real life. So you kind of take away some of that, because I think it can be leveled at maybe the game, the gaming platform uh, previously was very avatar led, but actually now we're getting to the point where we can get people, real life people into that platform in authentic ways. Um, yes, there's volumetric capture we're doing. Uh, there's all sorts of things, but you, I, I think it's kind of mixing, it's, it's remembering that actually at the end of the day we're humans and we need that human experience and when you fuse those bits together i think that's where the excitement's coming and you think about e-com e-com i mean like let's face it uh, uh shopping on a on a website is fundamentally quite flat and and slightly dull so think mm. about how we can make that experience really creative and immersive finding out where uh things have come from who made them what you know there's just so much more stories so many more stories you can tell through this uh, through this platform. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you. You know, everybody looks to platforms like Amazon, don't they, as, as these pinnacles of technology and customer service, and, and people want to buy in that way. But what they what they often forget are the brand led stories. You know, things like the Nike launches, the Supreme launches, um, yeah. all of those things which are very tangible, and, and, and you know, people queue up for for hours to cut the, the latest, you know, Supreme T-shirt or something like that. And I'm really excited to see how brands utilize technology to transition that in a digital way to, to as your point earlier, to make it more accessible, maybe, you know, to be able to give people a different story and a different feeling and, and actually to expand the horizon of what's actually possible outside of, of brick and mortar. And again, I guess then, you know, the blend of, of, of hybrid going back to like how does digital sit alongside a physical activation, for example? Um, you make, we you do have a, really a good point. yeah. So, sorry, I was going to say sorry, Adam. I think you make a really good point about actually uh, one element of this is actually when we get back to hybrid, this is brilliant for twinning those audiences together uh, and how to really immerse a live physical audience in a virtual platform. So, uh, I, I think it's only just started, personally. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, we do have a couple of questions here from, from the audience. So um, I think I'm interested in this one as well. Where can people go and kind of try 8D audio for themselves? I know the, the presentation, we couldn't get the feel, the, 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 the sense of it. Is there, is there a hardware requirement in play? Do, do they need to buy some equipment to be able to experience that? Uh, you just need a pair of headphones. And if you go online uh, and just type in 8D audio, you'll hear some. Uh, to be fair, there's a lot of people saying 8D audio. Some of it's just more like audio scapes. So you have to be fairly okay. uh, choosy about the ones you go for. But there's some brilliant examples as well. Of, and if you shut your eyes, put the headphones in, you can hear people, especially on some of the commentary. Now, there's some very funny ones out there. Some of the commentary where people are walking around you. And literally, it sounds like they're whispering in your ear. It's a little bit freaky. I don't, uh, but it's, uh, it's great fun. I've got people whispering in my ear right now, mate, so that's, <laughs> that's normal for me after three days of Tech Live. Um, and the, the last question, um, it says, is Unreal, and I think that means the Unreal Engine, uh, well, it actually says, sorry, is the Unreal the go-to engine for creating immersive events? In this, it's come up a couple of times over the last couple of days in presentations. Is, 
is is that the the go to platform for creating some of these environments? Do you think, Matt? Um, I think it, it all depends on what the brief is. Uh, if you want, so if we're going to go, and especially with Unreal Five, um, but the so the, basically, it's Unreal is investing huge amounts. It's going to like millions of polygons. It's kind of it's got some really really clever thinking and AI and everything else that you expect uh, coming to fruition now. But there's other there's there's plenty of other uh, platforms. And if if your if your budget's a bit tight, you know, remembering that actually there's a cost for doing pixel streaming. So actually, you can do uh, a web version of this, lower vision, lower kind of um, uh, photographic realism, but you can do web versions in WebGL that actually can give you some of that interaction and immersiveness, but you don't need to pay for big servers uh, in online. So um, it really depends, and there's plenty of other uh, competitors to Unreal as well. It depends on exactly what you want. I think we, we yeah. choose Unreal because I think if we're looking for that quality, they definitely provide that. And I, I've just got one personal question for you. To what extent consideration does the does does a project like this go to to un, try and understand um, the capabilities of the equipment that the end user have got? You mentioned ray tracing a little bit earlier. Um, I'm a gamer. I've got a PS5. I know with some games that can do ray yeah. tracing, but for some that might be out of reach of financial budgets or accessibility they might not have a ps5 for example so like how much of a consideration is you know putting features in like that that maybe um, a, a smaller number of people can access yeah so you're not going to do that in the webgl kind of version the, 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 um, but what you are so that's why we used the pixel streaming we had some really chunky servers and we're actually in instances of one-to-one -one on the servers sometimes you can get two people uh, on the same server but this the gra it was quite graphics uh, heavy um, and that enabled the ray tracing, so you could look at it on your phone, on an old laptop, anything with a screen really, and a keyboard, you could look at it and get that quality. Um, if you were trying to take it into, into a natively into your machine, yeah, uh, ray tracing needs a chunky machine to run it, uh, as you well know with your PS5. So, uh, but it's, but this is just like, this is, you know, at the start, there's so many more features coming in to make that, get that hyper realism going. And uh, really exciting. Yeah, and, and if Malcolm's Law is anything to go by, you know, technology is yeah. just continually advancing at such a, a, a rapid pace, it it's actually feels sometimes hard to, to keep up with the, the, the possibilities and the capabilities, right? Um, but Matt, thank you for sharing both the Smile and the Samsung story with us. Um, it, it's clear that you guys were right at that bleeding edge of, of seeing where technology can go with great support of, of brands like Samsung to really give you the license to push the boundaries. Um, for anybody that wants to connect up with you kind of during the event, after the event, where's the best place to go? Please do. Uh, you can connect at, uh, on the on the event portal or my email, uh, matt at smile, S-M-Y-L-E dot co dot UK. Very simple to remember that one. Um, please, yeah, uh, feel free to connect. I'm happy to, happy to help where I can. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome, okay, awesome. Um, <laughs> attendees, please do connect up with Matt. We'll see you very briefly in the next session. Matt, thank you for joining us again today from the UK, and um, hopefully we'll get you back into UK, Event Tech Live UK to tell us the next story uh, with the next band that you've been working with. Amazing. Thank you, Adam, so much, and well done. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.